This patient is called Tim. Tim Joe is 49 year old and father of six. Tim Joe used to be a successful businessman. But since his car rental and sales company collapsed, Tim has been struggling after the trap in travel and sales due to the pandemic in 2020. This forced Tim's company to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in February 2021. And Tim still has about 3 million US dollars in debt. Tim was recently trying to sell the most of his properties, including all his company fleet to pay his creditors. Unfortunately, all this came with high negative impact on his health, and Tim has then been expressing symptoms of burnout, depression, and high blood pressure. Last year, he was admitted three times in the heart emergency room due to hypertensive crisis. Tim was several times advised by his doctors to take a break from his work, but creditors could not allow him to be compliant with medical recommendations. So Tim kept on working harder and harder, trying to pay his debt so as to be able to save his business again. Today Tim woke up well, took his breakfast and dropped to work as usual. At 10 p.m., Tim suddenly fainted in his office after having complained of severe headaches for half an hour. Colleagues called an ambulance and Tim was brought to the emergency room. The emergency room doctor agently examined Tim and Tim was one more time found with hypertensive crisis with blood pressure 25 over 162. A team could not speak. Emergency CT scan was organized and the CT scan revealed this. A temporal lobe intracranial hemorrhage. Team is diagnosed with a stroke. A hemorrhagic stroke. A diversified team is currently being mobilized. Let us wish him a prompt recovery from his truck. <laughs> Do you know that more than 15 million people have a stroke every year? Out of which 5 million die and 5 million are left disabled. According to the World Health Organization in 2022, stroke was the leading cause of disability worldwide and the second cause of death and one in four people over 25 years today will have a stroke in their lifetime. So what is stroke? A stroke is a medical condition in which poor blood flow to the brain or parts of the brain cause the brain cells to die. The word stroke comes from an idea of receiving a blow in reference to how quickly stroke is known to, to appear. Other names for strokes are cerebrovascular accidents or CVA, cerebrovascular insult or CVI, brain stroke, etc. In this video, we answer a few questions about stroke such as how does stroke happen? What are the symptoms of a stroke? Who does stroke happens to? What are complications of stroke? How do we treat stroke? How do we prevent stroke and its complications? We recommend you to watch this video to the end so that you don't miss any information. And as we continue, please subscribe to our channel now and activate the notification clock. So, how does stroke happen? A stroke happens in two main ways. Number one, a blocked artery can cut off an area of the brain. This is known as an ischemic stroke, and this is more than 80% of all strokes. 
The second type of stroke happens when a blood vessel leaks or breaks into the brain, making blood to spill into the brain tissue or in tissues surrounding the brain and therefore causing tissue damage. This is called hemorrhagic stroke. Number three, a cryptogenic stroke is the term used to refer to strokes for which no definite cause can be identified. Criteria and different definition is the causative classification system will be explained in other videos on this channel very soon. There are many ways an ischemic stroke occur. In the first one, a clot and thrombus is formed locally into a brain artery, cutting blood supply to a part of brain. This is called a thrombogenic ischemic stroke. It is associated to high cholesterol levels, tobacco use, and so on. The other way an ischemic stroke occur, a clot or an ampulli forms in another part of the body, moves to the brain, and block a brain artery. This is called an embolic ischemic stroke. These types happen to people suffering from some types of heart disease such as auricular fibrillation or after heart attack, for example. A tertiary ischemic attack or TIA or mini stroke is when a stroke happens and symptoms disappear within 24 hours. A TIA usually has minimal long-term complications. But as we'll study it later, a TIA is a high risk factor for, for other stroke to happen in the future. In ischemic stroke, one of the mechanisms is endothelial cell dysfunction, which is where something irritates or inflames the slippery inner line of the artery, the tunica intima. One of the classic irritants is the toxin found in tobacco, which float in the blood. This is when a built up of fat, cholesterol, calcium, and proteins and immune cell cells associated forms and start to obstruct the arterial blood flow. In this mechanism, it usually takes years for the plaque to build up and the blockage happens progressively. But some plaques are thermogenic, which means that blood clot tend to form around them and can fasten the obstruction, leading to an acute thrombogenic stroke in which within minutes a blood artery becomes fully blocked. As mentioned earlier, another mechanism for ischemic stroke formation is an embolism. An embolic ischemic stroke typically happens when a blood vessel forms in one location in the body and travels through the blood in the artery downstream, typically in arteries and capillaries of smaller diameters. This blood clot typically forms inside of atherosclerosis, but can also form in the heart. For instance, stagnant blood flow in the heart or other parts of the body may lead to clot formations. In the heart, for example, blood can stagnate due to a condition called arterial fibrillation or after a heart attack. In arterial fibrillation, stroke appears when clot forms in the left atrium. But clot forming in the white atrium tend to migrate to the lungs, leading to a pulmonary embolism instead. The same appears in deep venous thrombosis or DVT, where embolic complication is more of pulmonary embolism rather than a brain stroke, as the blood from veins in the right atrium move first to the lungs with no way going to the brain. The only exception is when the patient presents an anterior septal defect which making blood to move directly from the right atrium to the left. But regardless of how it happens, ischemic stroke forms a brain lesions with two zones, an ischemic core and ischemic penum. An ischemic core, ischemic core is formed by the brain tissue which will ultimately die from ischemia. But an ischemic penumbra is a brain tissue preserved for a period of time by collateral circulation and will survive if the blood flow is established quickly enough. 
There are a few ways hemorrhagic stroke happen. The most common is hypertension or high blood pressure. Hypertension can lead to hyaline arteriosclerosis, which results from the elevated hydrostatic pressure pushing the proteins out of the blood vessel lumen into the interstitial space within the blood vessel wall. Over time, as this protein deposes into the blood vessels, the blood vessel becomes stiff and fragile and therefore more vulnerable for rupture. Hypertension can also cause bulges in small arteries called microaneurysm. These aneurysms are called charcot butchard aneurysms. This aneurysm can rupture at any time, more likely when blood pressure reaches highly elevated levels, also called hypertensive crisis. Remember our patient team Joe case in this video. And we recommend you to watch more videos on hypertension on this channel. Hemorrhagic strokes are also sometimes associated with arteriovenous malformation, which are a tangle of blood vessels that directly connect the artery to a vein. At times, these blood vessels can rupture, causing hemorrhagic stroke, intracranial hemorrhage. Hemorrhagic stroke are sometimes associated with acquired condition that damage arteries and in the cerebrum, such as vasculitis, a disease where blood vessels walls are inflamed. And vascular tumors like hemangioma, which is benign vascular tumor of the epithelial cells of the blood vessel and cerebral amyloid angiopathy, which is the degenerative disease where abnormal proteins deposit in the walls of arteries, making them less compliant to changes in blood pressure. Finally, hemorrhagic stroke can also happen after an ischemic stroke. When an ischemic stroke occurs, entire parts of the brain are cut from the blood supply. This leads to the damage of the brain tissue together with the blood vessels in it. But in some cases, the blocked blood arteries reappear. This is called reperfusion. When this happens, the already destroyed blood vessels are now weak and prompt to rupture, causing a secondary hemorrhagic stroke. If this happens, there is bleeding in the dead tissue, and it's called hemorrhagic castration. Regardless the cause, when there is hemorrhagic stroke, blood starts spilling from the ruptured blood vessel, causing a pool of blood which increases pressures in the skull. Too much pressure into the skull causes more damage to the nearby brain tissue and to other blood vessels in the brain. It also means less blood is flowing downstream to the cells that need it, leading to downstream cells to suffer from lack of needed oxygen and nutrients. Healthy tissues can die from both direct pressure and lack of oxygen and nutrients within a few minutes to hours. Increasing pressure into the skull can also lead to the brain herniation, which is when the brain moves across the structures in the skull. These structures include the fox cerebri, which divides the two halves of the brain, the tenterium cerebelli, which divides the occipital lobe from the cerebellum, and the foramen magnum, which is the hole in the base of the skull where the spinal cord connects to the brain. For a better understanding, let's make a short recap on some basic anatomy and physiology of the brain. Our brain has two regions, and each region has one or more different functions. The most obvious is the cerebrum, which is divided into two cerebral hemispheres, each of which has a cortex and a medulla. Each cortex has four lobes the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the temporal, and the occipital lobe. There are also a number of the additional structures, including the cerebellum and the brain stem, which connect to the spinal cord. The right cerebrum controls muscles on the right side of the body, and the left cerebrum controls the muscles on the right side.
the frontal lobe controls movements and ability to make decisions executive function. The parietal lobe processes sensory information which make us locate where we are physically and walking movements in a space of three dimensions. The temporal lobe plays a role in smelling, hearing, memory as well as visual recognition of faces and language. At last, the occipital lobe which is primarily responsible for vision. The cerebellum helps with the balance and muscle coordination. And finally, there is the brain stem which plays a vital role in functions like breathing, blood pressure, consciousness, as well as in the functioning of the stomach and intestines. The brain receives blood from the right and the left carotid arteries, as well as the, well as the left and the right vertebral arteries, which come together to form the basilar artery. The right and the right internal carotid arteries turn into cerebral arteries. All these arteries divide into different branches that supply blood to the previously mentioned various regions of the brain. And there is an ischemic stroke or hemorrhagic stroke. Both cause brain cells to die, making part of the brain to stop functioning properly. Is the brain controls the whole body, Part of the brain that stopped to function due to a stroke will be responsible of types of symptoms the patient will present. In other words, stroke symptoms depend on the exact part of the brain where brain cells are damaged. For instance, if a stroke affects the interior and middle cerebral arteries, the patient will present a sudden muscle weakness and numbness. Number two, if the stroke affects Broca's area, which is located in the left inferior frontal gyrus lobe, the patient will present Broca's aphasia, which is an inability to express language or speech. Number three, if it affects the Wernicke's area, which is located in the left temporal lobe, stroke will cause Wernicke's aphasia, which is an inability for the patient to comprehend or understand speech. If the stroke affects regions in occipital lobe, which is mainly supplied by the posterior cerebral artery, the patient will present with vision problems such as partial or total vision loss. In the cranium, to remember some of the stroke symptoms is fast F for facial drooping, A for arm weakness, S for speech difficulties, and T for time. T is a symptom, but a reminder that if someone presents one of the stroke symptoms, we need to call for help fast to minimize brain cell injury and to maximize the chance for a full recovery. Long term complications of stroke are mainly disabilities, which can affect any part or function of the body, such as communication, ambulation swallowing and ultimately the cycle. To locate the affected brain region, a head CT scan and or an MRI must be performed as soon as possible. Flare sequence MRI helps to distinguish a new stroke injury from an old one. Spent scan is of a great help where available. Scan can also predict clinical outcome for patients with ischemic stroke. Flare sequence MRI help distinguish a new stroke from an old one. An angiography with a contrast injected into the blood can help to visualize the exact, the exact location where the blood flow is blocked within the artery. Treatments of ischemic stroke goal is reestablishing blood flow as soon as possible, particularly in the pen and for one minute count. Measures include medication such as TPA or tissue plasma activator, 
are used to activate natural clot destruction mechanism. Aspirin is also used to prevent platelets in forming additional clot. If TPA cannot be used, a surgical procedure called MASI for mechanical impellence removal in cerebral is key. <laughs> Consist of introducing a retriever in the blocked artery and pull the clot and then reestablishing the downstream blood flow. A massive retriever is a surgical device used in this operation. Treatment of hemorrhagic strokes has two goals. The goal number one, relieve the intracranial pressure. The goal number two, stop the bleeding if possible. Medical treatment of hemorrhagic strokes includes using drugs that help control high blood pressure and relieve elevated intracranial pressure. But it's important to know that generally managing blood pressure and stroke is usually a matter of controversy in different schools and protocols. Surgical treatments include craniotomy to relieve elevated intracranial pressure and clapping ruptured aneurysm. Stereotactic inspiration can be performed to aspirate blood located deep in the brain tissue. This technique is computer tomography scan guided. <laughs> Management of stroke complications done through stroke rehabilitation. Stroke rehabilitation is usually a multidisciplinary management under the coordination of either a general practitioner a neurologist, a neurosurgeon, or a stroke medicine specialist. If the stroke affects the ability to work or perform daily tasks, physiotherapists and occupational therapists might help. In difficult to swallow, a dietitian might prescribe special diet. In speech disabilities, a language and speech therapist can be consulted. If there is vision disturbance, an ophthalmologist will be associated. Ultimately, shock usually lead to mood swings and change in behavior. That makes us resolve a clinical psychologist to be of good support to patients with stroke. What are then risk factors for stroke? Different types of stroke can happen to anyone at any age. But some people have a higher risk factors than others. The following are the main stroke risk factors. Gender, being a man, is a risk factor. Being black is a risk factor. Being older than 55 is a risk factor as well. Other risk factors are being obese, being physically inactive, drinking too much alcohol, having uncontrolled high blood pressure, having high cholesterol level, smoking, and suffering from heart disease. A history of stroke including a patient ischemic attack is also a risk factor. We recommend you to watch videos on hypertension on this channel and if not subscribed yet, please subscribe now. The following are measures to prevent stroke. Maintaining blood pressure normal. In fact, high blood pressure is the number one cause of stroke. Number two, number two, quitting smoking. Number three, being more active. Number five, lowering your cholesterol level. Number six, maintaining weight normal. Please watch our upcoming video on how to lose weight fast on this channel. The following tip is avoiding stress. Then, number eight, sleep early and enough. Number nine, adopt a healthy diet. 
Number 10, it reduces your alcohol consumption, reducing your alcohol consumption, and instead take plenty of water in early morning and throughout the day. Lastly, get updated health information regularly on this channel. I'm Dr. Eric. This channel is delivering information that promotes longevity, health, and holistic wellness, as well as lifestyle safety tips. All the information provided on this channel is tailored for comprehensive holistic health educational purpose. Wow! If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly subscribe to our channel now so that you don't miss any content. Also, remember to like and share videos with friends and colleagues. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. See you soon.